Hi guys, welcome back. I'm happy to see you back for another webinar. Today we are going to discuss circular motion. Um, okay, I see there are quite a few new people. So uh, let me just talk about very quickly uh, what we're going to do over here. First of all, I'll discuss the basics of circular motion. That is recap. Yeah. So um, all of it has already been discussed in the videos in the module. I'll just recap the basic points because we're going to use them uh, when we solve the questions. Then I'll give you a question at a time. I'll give you about a couple of minutes to solve. Um, you can give me your answer in case you get it uh, through the Q&A, which has been enabled. And then we are going to solve the question together. Then we'll discuss what is the best method of solving it, yeah? Um, I don't really discuss the algebra methods and all. I mean, in case, uh, you know, if you ask me today, how would you solve it using variables? I'll probably just get a little lost because I haven't thought in those terms for a very long time, yeah? Most GMAT questions can be very easily done using just logic. So try to focus on the logical method. It will be so much faster. You will take like, you know, barely a minute. And all the questions that we're going to discuss today are going to be like a good 700 to 800 level. Yeah. All right. So um, let's start. Let me just share my screen with you. So first of all, I'm going to take the few basics. Yeah. And just the key points. All right, so here we go. Let me just discuss first, what is circular motion? So we know that circular motion is just motion in a circle, right? So let's say normally we say that there are two objects, they're starting from the same point. They could start from different points also, but in any case, most of our circular motion questions have the, the uh, two objects starting from the same point. So let's say, you know, both of them could start at the same time. So let's say we have A and B, and then they go around and around the circle. And then, you know, we are asked about, let's say, when do they meet first or at what, where is different point do they meet, etc. So a lot of different things. Now, our aim in most circular reasoning questions, most harder circular reasoning questions, yeah, the ones which seem kind of tricky, is going to be to find the ratio of speeds. Because the ratio of speeds will tell us a lot about it. Yeah? They, if, uh, the ratio of speed will tell us when do they meet for the first time, when do they meet for the first time at the starting point, and how many different points do they meet on the circle. And usually that is what our questions are about. Yeah, and I'm talking about like the really hard ones as well. A good 700 to 800 level questions as well. So our aim normally would be to find the ratio of speed. So sometimes you would have the speed given, brilliant, yeah? Or we would have the time given or the ratio of time. We know how to find the ratio of speeds using the ratio of time, right? So in either case, once we get the ratio of speeds, then it becomes easy. So that, keep that in mind always, yeah? So for example, let's say we are given the ratio of speed is three is to five. What does that tell us? The first thing I'm going to say to myself, it doesn't matter. You know, let's say they'll say this guy goes at 30 meters per second, this guy goes at 50 meters per second or whatever. I'll just ignore all of that, yeah? I'll say ratio of speeds is three is to five. And then what am I going to tell myself? I will say, yeah, that when this guy, let's say A is to B. So I'll say when A covers three laps, in the same time, B covers five laps. Yeah, say that to yourself once. You will see how easy the questions become when you do that. Tell yourself, okay, so ratio is three is to five. So, and think about this. When A covers three laps, B covers five laps. So let's say, you know, this is your A. So when A does one lap, two lap, and three lap, in the same time, B does one, two, three, four, five laps. Yeah? That means that at the same time, then they are back at this point at S after A has done three laps and after B has done five laps, right? Okay, so this is the very, very basic. Now, uh, very quickly, let's just review when do they meet for the first time. That depends on whether they are going in the same direction or in the opposite direction. Now, think about the logic over here. Let's say A and B are going in the same direction. Let's say A is very slow as compared to B, yeah? So A has reached here, my B has reached here. A has moved another little bit of distance, my B has reached, let's say here. 
A has moved another little bit of distance. Let's say B is over here. A has moved some more distance. Let's say B has come back over here and now B is over here in line with A. Look at the distance that was covered by B, uh, by A. A covered this distance, that's it. What was the distance covered by B? B moved this entire circle and then this distance that was covered by A as well, right? So basically the faster one covers one lap more than the slower one. When they are moving in the same direction, the faster one has to cover one lap, exactly one lap more than the slower one to catch up with the slower one, to, to you know, overtake the slower one, to meet the slower one, yeah? Now, what happens in case they are moving in the opposite direction? So let's say this is moving in this direction, this is moving in this direction. So let's say you have A over here and B over here, right? When will they meet? We know that they will meet. This is moving like this. 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 We know they'll meet here. Think about your relative speed, right? They'll move, uh, meet here when together they cover one complete lap. Together, right? Here, the faster covers one lap more than the slower when they're moving in the same direction. And when they're in opposite directions, then together they cover one lap one complete lap, yeah, together. That is when they meet for the first time. And then you can continue, you know, second time would be no different again. The faster one will cover one more lap more than the slower one, etc. And here they'll together cover one more lap. So you can go on like that, right? Now, sometimes our question is, when do they meet for the first time at S? Let's say they both start at S. When do they meet at the first time? For the first time, again at S. When are they together? Again at S, right? Here, the direction doesn't matter. Whether they're going in the same direction or opposite direction just doesn't matter. Why? Because look, we said, for example, when the ratio is three is to five, right? When this guy has made three laps, this guy has made five laps, and now they are both together over here. So whenever the ratio is an integer number, you see, when both of these are integers, three and five, right? When uh, the ratio of their speeds, then we can say that after three laps of A, they'll meet together at S. And in that time, B would have covered five laps, right? Let me halve it. Let's say speed is three is to five. I can also say that the speed is 1.5 is to 2.5, uh, 2.5, no worries, right? All right, when the speed is 1.5 is to 2.5, your A would have covered one entire circle and then another half, whereas B would have covered two entire circles and then another half. So they would meet. This is the time, first time that they would meet, but they are not meeting at S, right? So that is why both these have to be integers for them to meet at S once again. Yeah, all right. Now, uh, one last thing. How do we come to know at how many points in the circle do they meet? So again, as I said, it is important to just know the ratio of the speeds. We bring the speed down to the lowest term. So this is like three is to five. It is in the lowest terms, right? When they are moving in the same direction. Now, all these things are discussed in your module and in your video. So, uh, and you know, with why as well. So go through that in case you don't really know this. Yeah. When they're moving in the same direction, then the number of points at which they are going to meet on the circle is going to be the difference of the two, A minus B, yeah? So for example, when the ratio is three is to five, they are going to meet at two points on the circle. We saw that one was S and one was over here, right? And when they are moving in the opposite direction, then they are going to meet at how many points? A plus B. So let's say if a and B are moving in the opposite direction. The ratio of the speed is three is to five. They are going to meet at eight points on the circle. Yeah, why? As I said, has already been discussed in the video, so we'll not waste time with that. Today, yeah. Okay, so these are the basics of circular motion. Um, I gave them just to help you review what we've already done. Now we look at some questions. Yeah, and we'll start with a uh, with an official question first of all, and then we'll go on to the other ones. Okay, there's a question. Just hold on. Let me check. 
Yes. So um, yeah, when we are, yeah, hi, Huda, I'm, I'm glad that you are here. Uh, we are taking this webinar because of your request. So um, when we are given the circumference in terms of, uh, you know, whatever, look, we question, I mean, in case the circumference is important, for example, we'll see questions without the circumference, we'll see questions with the circumference as well. In case the circumference is important, then it becomes a little more calculation intensive question, right? We'll divide it with the speed, et cetera, and then we'll know how much time it will take to cover the entire surround. Basically, what we need is the ratio of the speeds, yeah? So, um, and if, you know, time is given to us, then we can find the ratio of these speeds. So then it does become a little more calculation intensive in case the circum. In fact, we'll have a question with, you know, we have all kinds of questions. We have a question where circumference is not given, a question where circumference is given, but it's not important, and one where it is given and important. So let's jump into the questions, yeah? Okay, let's try it now. Yesterday, Candice and Sabrina trained for a bicycle race by riding around an oval track. Does it matter whether it is circular or oval? Really doesn't, right? Okay, let's just make an oval track. Okay, it's not oval, whatever. Okay, they both began riding at the same time from the track starting point. So the track had a starting point. Let's call it S. However, Candice rode at a faster pace than Sabrina, completing each lap around the track in 42 seconds. So... I said that Candice takes 42 seconds and while Sabrina completed each lap in 46 seconds. How many laps around the track had Candice completed the next time that Candice and Sabrina were together at the starting point? So we need them to be back over here at the starting point together. Yeah. So they are meeting at the starting point, first meeting at the starting point again. Yeah. So what did we say? We said that when we're talking about the first meeting, etc., what we would like to know is the ratio of their speeds. Okay, I don't have their speeds, but I have the time that they took. So the ratio of the time is 42 is to 46, right? But then in case I have, look, they are covering the same distance. They are covering one lap. It is the same for both of them, right? So then if I have the ratio of the time given to me, can I find the ratio of the speed? It's just the inverse, right? This is our TSD 101, isn't it? So then if this is 21 is to 23 in the lowest terms, then the ratio of the speed becomes what? 23 is to 21. We're talking about Candice and Sabrina, right? So this is the ratio of their speeds. We've got it. Then I said, the moment I get the ratio of the speeds, what do I say to myself? I will say, that in the time that Candice covers 23 laps, Sabrina covers 21 laps, right? They are both integers, which what does that mean? It means that they have covered complete laps, right? Full, full ovals. And they are in the lowest form as well, 23 is to 21, right? So what does that mean? That this is the first time that they will meet back at the starting point. Yeah? In, when Candice has covered 23 laps and when Sabrina has covered 21 laps. This is when they'll meet again at the starting point. So, and what is our question? How many laps around the track had Candice completed the next time when they were the starting point? So our answer is simply B. Right? Again, try to get the ratio of the speeds. If speeds are given, you can easily get the ratio of the speeds. If time is given, you just flip it to get the ratio of the speeds because they're talking about the same distance. Then you tell yourself that this means that, you know, Candice covered 23 laps in the same time as Sabrina covered 21 laps. Since this ratio is in the lowest form, I know that this is the first time, and they are both integers, this is the first time when they're going to meet back at S, right? Look, what if they, it was not an integer? For example, what if this, I, I you know, make it 11.5 is to 10.5, for example, or 10.5, right? What happens in that case? They are not at S because at this time, again, I'll say Candice has covered 11.5 laps. Then where is Candice? Candice is here. Sabrina has covered 10.5 laps. So Sabrina is also over here. They are not at the starting point, but I need to know 
that they should be at the starting point together. So that is why we need these to be, both of them to be integers, right? All right. <clears throat> Yes, so this is the second time they are meeting, absolutely. So the first time that they'll meet is when Candice has covered exactly one lap more than Sabrina. This happens when Candice covers 11.5. We divided the whole thing by two, right? What did we, because here there's a difference of two between them. If we want a difference of one between them, we'll divide them. The ratio doesn't change. We get 11.5 is to 10.5, right? So then at this time, Candice has covered exactly one lap more than Sabrina. And this is when they meet for the first time, but their first meeting is then at, at a point which is diametrically opposite, right? So uh, this was one official question. Now we look at some other questions.